Hi, I'm Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, and I am here today to talk to you about our equipment series. So we are going to break down all the equipment that you might need for your show dog, for your grooming competition dog, maybe in your salon, or maybe if you're just simply trying to take care of your own dog at home. We have got all the equipment, and today we are going to talk about pin brushes. So whether you're familiar with pin brushes, you've tried and used every one, or you don't even know what I'm talking about, let's get started. So we're just gonna dive right in and talk about just quickly what is a pin brush? Because you might think, well, all brushes have pins in them. And that is true. But let's break down what is a pin brush. So no matter the size, the shape, the color, a pin brush is going to have a straight pin. So when you look at that pin, it is nice and straight. Now, one thing that I am going to warn you about is that you really want to make sure that the ends of the pins feel smooth to the touch to you because pins are basically wire that is cut to a certain length and they are put in the brush. So a very inexpensive brush, typically the wire is just cut and inserted into the brush pad that kind of holds it together. And that can be very scratchy for your dog. So if you've ever, been scratched by a piece of wire on a fence or somewhere else, you know that that scratches, it can hurt, it can, it can draw blood. And in very extreme cases um, with an inexperienced person with a brush without a round ground pin, it could also cause what we call brush burn where your dog actually has a little bit of blood come to the surface of the skin from aggressive brushing or from pins not being round ground. So look for a brush that has a round ground pin. It's gonna feel smooth to the touch and it's also gonna feel smooth like kind of if you're brushing it on your skin. If it scratches your skin, most likely it's going to scratch your dog. So one of the things that happens is I get a lot of emails or people coming up to me and they say, oh, my dog just hates being groomed. And a lot of times this can be simply from poor equipment. So look for a brush that does have round ground pins. So let's move on. Who needs a pin brush? Well, if you have a smooth coated dog, so maybe you have a French Bulldog, a Boxer, or some kind of mixed breed that's a mix of those breeds and has a very smooth flat laying coat, you probably don't need a pin brush. I can't really see a reason for you to need one. Um, and if you have a dog with long silky coat, so think of a Yorkshire Terrier or a Maltese, or um, you know a mixed breed of one of those, then yes, you are definitely going to need a pin brush. As well, a lot of double coated breeds, so think of Shetland Sheepdogs, um, Bernese Mountain Dogs, Golden Retrievers, those can use a pin brush as well as a slicker brush. Um, many Poodles, Bichons, Doodles, they would need a slicker brush as well as a pin brush. And kind of the rule of thumb is, is that you're going to use the pin brush um, on the longer, silkier coat on those breeds that have more than one coat type. So think setters, spaniels, um, your Bernese Mountain Dogs, your Poodles, etc. And then you would use the slicker brush on the shorter coat. And another rule of thumb for me is that the denser the coat is, so think of a very curly, curly Portuguese water dog, um, a Bichon, the curlier the coat is, the more firm you are going to want the pad. So when we look at a pin brush, this is the pad where the, the pins sit into the brush. We call that the pad. And some pads are very flexible and some are a little stiffer. So for me, I want a stiffer pad on a brush that I'm going to be brushing shorter, denser coat. Even if I'm using a pin brush on my wire haired dog, so a wire fox terrier, an Airedale terrier, or something like that, I'm going to want the pad to be quite firm. And you know, the pads can come in different colors and some companies, Chris Christensen, they have a set of brushes where the pad uh, firmness or flexibility is color coded. Um, other brushes do not, it's more pick it up and feel it. And if it, is it very flexible or is it very firm? So if you have a dog that has very silky coat, so again, those Yorkies, those Maltese with that really nice long, you're gonna want a pad that is very, very flexible. I want to use a longer pin. So here's a brush with a 35 millimeter pin on dogs with longer coat. And I'm going to want to use a shorter pin on dogs with shorter coat. 
It just makes your brushing a little bit easier. It's a great place to start. You know, all brushes are personal preference, what you're used to, etc. But for me, that's where I start myself or that's where I start new people into grooming is longer coated dogs, longer pin, shorter coated dogs, shorter pin, right? Denser coat, firmer pad, and then a more silky coat, a more flexible pad, right? So, so far, like that's a lot of things to think of. Then we have all of these different sizes and shapes, right? Again, those are personal preference, but obviously you don't want to use the biggest brush on your little tiny teacup chihuahua that happens to have long coat. And if you try to use the little tiny pocket oval, the small oval brush, you know, on your Afghan hound, this is gonna take you a lot longer to use the brush, right? So, you know, general guidelines, but for me, kind of the workhorse brush is the oval shape. You know, we have several different oval shaped brushes. Um, that's my workhorse brush. That's the brush that I reach to the most times. That's the brush that I recommend the most. And then some of the other shapes that I might use are obviously the very small oval for very small dogs, or if you have a junior handler, a young person, or even if you're elderly and you just get hand fatigue very quickly, you might want a smaller, lighter oval brush. And then the oblong brushes, um, I like to use these for styling. So I'll use these if I'm trying to work, um, get the coat really nice and straight because I can kind of use it more like a round brush and pull that coat down. Um, I also find these oblong shaped brushes really great for like behind the ears, in toes, in armpits. Like they're really great for those kind of things. So, you know, if you wanted to buy more than one brush, an oval and an oblong would be great choices. And then we have, um, you know, this is still a pin brush because the pins are straight. It's in more of a traditional silk slicker type shape of a brush, that T shape to the brush. We see that more in slickers than in pin brushes, but some people really love these T shaped pin brushes. So a lot of people that use these are people with like Alaskan Malnutes, a lot of those double coated breeds where you're really trying to work through the pants. So instead of holding your oblong brush this way to get through the pants, you can simply hold the T shaped brush this way going through pants, etc but I find it more of like a specialty shape of brush because it's harder to use behind the ears, in the armpits, et cetera, for me. Now, you might find that that's fantastic. Um, again, personal preference, but just trying to like point out some of the differences. Then we're going to go into some of the specialty type pin brushes. This is called a nice slip brush. It has very thick, chunky pins, and this is really good for de-matting your dog because it really can get into those mats, really help break them up. It doesn't give brush burn. It's quite forgiving. And we recommend this for dematting. Now, could you use this on your whole dog? You could, but the pins aren't very flexible, which is again, why it's good for dematting because it helps, you know, get that mat broken down. Now, one of my favorite kind of specialty pin brushes is this wooden pin brush. So this wooden pin brush again has these straight pins and they are actually made of wood. Now, why do I think this is fantastic? This is a fantastic brush for puppies because it's so incredibly soft. This is a great brush for elderly dogs. Again, a lot of times they can have skin issues or they're just old and a little bit more fragile. Again, incredibly soft on their skin. If you have a dog who um, has an adverse reaction to grooming, maybe because it was groomed improperly at some point, maybe it's a rescue dog, um, maybe you were using an incorrect brush previously. Again, fantastic brush because it just feels so incredible on their skin. Um, as well, I would give this to like, you know, if I had young kids come into my setup and want to help groom, I would maybe hand them a brush like this because they found it fantastic. You know, I didn't have to worry about them with the brush at all. They're not going to either hurt the scratch themselves or scratch my dog. If you're teaching somebody how to brush that doesn't have fantastic brushing technique, the wooden pin brush is like just such an incredible option. So to recap, like how are you going to pick the right brush for your dog? Well, you could simply think about it this way. Look at your dog. Is it going to have quite short hair? So by short hair, I mean hair that is probably an inch and a half or shorter. In that case, you're going to most likely want a brush that has a shorter pin and or that denser, firmer feeling to the actual pad flexibility, right? So that's a good place to start. If you have a dog that has, you know, long hair, maybe it's like two inches to 
four or five inches. Then you might want a brush that maybe has like a 22, 27 millimeter pin and kind of has, you know, medium flexibility. And again, you have an Afghan, you have a Maltese in big coat, something very, very silky. You're gonna want a longer pin and a, um, a softer flexibility to that pad. Now, before I sign off about brushes, we're just gonna talk a little bit about what are the brushes made of. So typically you're gonna want to look for a brush with a wooden handle. Um, why is that? Well, plastic, let's face it, they're gonna hit the floor, right? They're gonna hit the floor at some time. Most people are grooming in a basement, in a garage, in a laundry room that has either a cement floor or a tile floor. And when a pin brush, a plastic brush hits the floor, it can only hit the floor so many times before that handle is going to break. We drop them, the dog kicks them off, we're not paying attention, they can fly out of our hand. So wood is my personal preference. Um, and you can also look for brushes, like this is a wood brush, it just has this special coating on it. I love this soft feel coating. Um, I've taken some of my wooden brushes and I've like put some tool dip on them myself, like just a little tip there for you to kind of give them a little bit more grip for me. So I personally would stay away from a brush that had a plastic handle. They're just not quite as durable um, and go for one that does have a wooden handle. You know, I have some personal favorites when it does come to pin brushes. So if you kind of are just really overwhelmed, maybe your dog has short hair now, but you think it's going to grow longer hair, a brush that I personally would reach for would be, um, there's a fusion brush by Chris Christensen and it has a 27 millimeter pin. Now for me, this is kind of like my go-to brush, right? I brush a lot of dogs every day, a lot of different dogs at dog shows, etc. And this brush can be my workhorse. Again, I like that oval shape because it is that workhorse shape. And I can brush most dogs, short haired, long haired, hard haired, dense coated, long silky coated with this brush. And just by slightly changing my technique can get through most dogs with this kind of brush. So I hope that in the end, if you're looking for something that that helps you. So the next time you're looking for a pin brush or you have a friend that doesn't really understand the difference between pin brushes, slicker brushes, or what really is out there, you have a new puppy person, I invite you to come and help them watch our video on picking the right equipment starting with a pin brush. Hi guys, thanks for joining us on another video in our equipment series. Like we said, there is a lot of equipment here that we need to cover. So if we haven't yet hit the piece of equipment that you're yearning to learn about, let us know in the comments below and we will add it to our very next one. As well, don't forget to like and subscribe because then you won't miss out on a video that maybe you've requested or something that you want to know about. Um, we are always here for you to answer any of your questions about these or any other products, any other thing that you need to know to take great care of your dog, whether you're in the salon, going to a dog show, or just trying to get your dog groomed at home in the easiest and most efficient way possible. So thanks again for joining us in our equipment series.